The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our epistle reading for this past Sunday, which was the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 18, where Paul said, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. My dear friends in Christ, prior to our scripture reading, the Apostle Paul was talking about our spiritual life as the believing children of God, contrary to what most people believe. Oh, most people will say, well, we're all children of God, but by nature, we're not all children of God. By nature, rather, we are children of Satan and sin because we were all conceived and born in sin. That's our natural condition. But because of what God does for us and because of what the Holy Spirit does for us, calling us to faith, making us believing children of God, well, now we're children of God and we want to live as children of God, at least our the faith side of us wants to live as children of God. Of course, our sinful nature always wants to pull us down, but our faith side, our new man side, that wants to live as children of God. And now that sounds simple enough, but because we're always going to have a sinful nature this side of heaven, it absolutely means that we need God's help to fight against our sinful nature and to live as the children of God that God wants us to live as. As Christians living in this sinful world, what the Apostle Paul wants us to realize is that, well, we can expect suffering by being tempted quite regularly in this life. Satan wants to get as many people as he possibly can to end up suffering with him. Misery loves company is what Satan is all about. He wants us to be in his clutches forever. And of course, what he already has in his clutches is all those people who are unbelievers, who haven't been called to faith in Jesus the Savior. And what Satan is going to do is he's going to use all kinds of temptations to, and have them all around us to try to somehow or other get us away from God. So we can expect sufferings because we're not going to fit in with the sinful world around us, the unbelieving world around us. And well, for that matter, neither should we fit in with the unbelieving world around us. We shouldn't want to fit in with the unbelieving world around us. When God makes us his believing children, what he does is he sets us apart as his special people, as his special people, and as his special people, as his believers, what he wants us to do is he wants us to share the message of his grace and love with the people around us. And now we may suffer ridicule when we try to share Jesus with the world. They may laugh at us, oh, for going to church or, or for going to a small church like ours that struggles to do God's work. But when you get right down to it, is that really suffering? Is that really suffering when we know that what we can do here is we can hear God's word that leads to eternal life and the joys of heaven? That's not really suffering. Our present sufferings, of course, also include, oh, the pains, the diseases, the virus threats, and all of those things that are a part of this life. Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. What we have to endure in this life, our present sufferings, they really aren't that much, especially when we consider the joys of heaven that we can look forward to, that God's going to give us. 
Let's think for a moment how long our sufferings are going to last. Even if we live to be 969 years old, that's the age of Methuselah, the oldest living person that's mentioned in the Bible. If we would live for 969 years, we won't do that. But if we were, that's nothing compared to the eternity that we're going to have and the blessings that we're going to have in that eternity in heaven. And when you get right down to it too, of course, can we really say that we have it that bad in this life? E even if there is a pandemic or cancer or heart disease or depression or other aches or pains. Sure, we have our hard times, but God also richly blesses us with his grace and love. And his grace and love compared with the problems of this life, well, the scale has to go in favor of God's grace and love. And as a matter of fact, it's overwhelmingly in favor of God's grace and love. There was an English gentleman who was visiting a friend who had a stable of famous riding horses. And when he looked at the riding horses, he noticed that one of the beautiful animals had a weight or a tether fastened to one of its legs which hindered the horse's motion. So he, he asked his friend, he said, why did you put a weight on that fine horse? And, and the owner said, I'd much rather do that than let him run free. He has a tendency to, to leap over fences and hedges and could permanently injure himself if he wasn't controlled. The owner was using good, sound judgment in, in putting the weight, the tether on that horse's leg, even though the animal didn't like being restrained. And so too, what God sometimes has to do is put a weight or a tether on us to prevent us from unwise actions, from sinful actions, rebellions against God. That's why God may choose to have us suffer in this life. Because our suffering in this life, well, one thing it often does is it just helps us so that we don't become too attached to this life and think of it as being our real home. It may also help us to look to God just a little bit more so that we aren't lured into the clutches of Satan and sin. But you know what we can always do is we can always rest assured that our Heavenly Father, who loves us so much that he gave us his Son, he gave us Jesus to be our Savior, to pay for our sins, to win for us heaven. Well, this loving Father who loves us that much, he's not going to allow any suffering or any problem into our lives that could somehow, that wouldn't somehow serve our eternal good. And our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory and the joy of heaven that we know is ours in Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we live in the sinful world, we expect sufferings, trials, and troubles. Help us to believe you'll always use our suffering to serve our eternal good and help us remember the glory and joy of heaven that we can expect because of Jesus our Savior. We pray in his name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.